let us learn the chapter forest and wildlife resources so when i say forest it reminds us of vegetation and the word vegetation means plant community and plant community is made up of trees bushes creepers shrubs now when i get into forest i will see thousands of varieties of vegetation similarly there will be different type of animals and insects living in it and when i say everything if i put it together then i can call it as a biodiversity so what we are looking at is a biodiversity so what is biodiversity biodiversity means the total number of species of plants and animals including the microorganisms that are living on the earth so india if i take india is one of the world's richest countries when it comes to biological diversity that is diversity in the living beings now these diverse flora as well as fauna when i say flora flora refers to the plant community or the plant species that are found in a particular area fauna means the animal species that are found in a particular area so when i take these diverse flora as well as fauna they are so well integrated or they are so well connected with each other that in our day to day life we take all these things for granted we say ye ho raha hai and today if i take up these forests these biodiversities or in simple words nature is under great stress the reason is the insensitivity of human beings so in simple words the question comes for one mark what is biodiversity the answer is it refers to the total number of species of plants animals and micro living organisms on earth will be called as biodiversity it is the it is a variety of organisms that are present in an ecosystem what is an ecosystem ecosystem you will find everywhere there can be a forest ecosystem there can be a pond ecosystem when i say pond ecosystem a pond what does it have it has living as well as non living it refers to the variety of organisms that are present in an ecosystem when i say ecosystem ecosystem is made up of biotic and abiotic factors so just if i take just one pond the pond will have living and non living factors what are they the living factors will be it can be fishes it can be tadpoles it can be frog and so many things non living means water temperature light these kind of things and they are continuously interacting with each other they form one ecosystem like that we have forest ecosystem every place will have an ecosystem and the variety in all these is referred to as biodiversity so the question is asked and that is what factors make forest a very useful resource for human the answer is four points and that is forest gives us products plenty of products especially forest gives us timber timber means that wood that is used by industries say for making furniture paper or sports goods so that is timber then it gives us gum resins flowers fruits medicinal herbs so many things so one of the way it is useful to us is it gives us many products second one is the forest protects how does forest protects say there are plenty of villages and villages close to the villages there are forests in the form of mountains so what are they doing they are holding the soil they are preventing the soil erosion next is when there is heavy rains on these mountains the water will come down very slowly and if we cut them cut these trees they will not be able to protect us and the people who are living down in the villages will have floods so forest protects us third one is forest regulates the environment how does it regulates it absorbs carbon dioxide and gives us oxygen so it helps in maintaining the cycle not only that it is also instrumental in giving us rainfall because wherever there is forest naturally there the temperatures are less and as the temperatures are less that develops a condition for precipitation and gives rainfall next is forest is a habitat a place where you know wild animals can live tribal people can live so these are the four important factors that make forest a resource for human beings now talking about why is biodiversity important for human lives and why are we talking about biodiversity the reason is forest is helpful in these four ways that we have seen so here how does forest help us it enriches our lives because right now when i'm breathing oxygen it is because of some forest and some trees that have produced oxygen so that is they enrich our lives 
Not only that, the soil that is so much essential for us in our day to day lives, it protects the soils, makes the earth livable. Again, coming back to it gives us oxygen and that's why we are living. It prevents soil erosion. It gives us so many products that I'm using in my day to day life. It is because of forest. It feeds human population. In India, there are thousands of tribes who are living in the forest or near the forest or for them, they get so many products from the forest. Forest protects our health. So this is how we can say biodiversity is important to us in our lives. And coming to last, last one is it supports our economies. It supports our economies. Matlab, any economic activity means it is dealing with money. It is giving us income. Forest gives us income in so many ways. First thing is it gives us a lot of timber and timber has market value. So in this way, biodiversity is important for human lives. Now, all over India, all over world, you will see or you will hear stories of deforestation. What is the loss because of that? The loss because of deforestation is loss of cultural diversity. There are many losses, but here we are discussing loss of cultural diversity. Okay. When I say in India, India is a land of, I will say, cultures. Thousands of cultures flourish in the rural areas or in the forests. If the forest itself is cleared, then the diversity is that uh, culture is gone. So here, the destruction of forest and wildlife is correlated with loss of cultural diversity. The reason is, once we have cutting the forest, clearing it, what are we doing? First one is, because of that, we will have marginalized and impoverished forest dependent communities. So the word marginalized means that is these people have been separated from the main population of the country. And because they are separated, they're living in separate place. They are deprived of all the privileges, all the facilities that the city people get, whether it is education, whether it is luxury. Okay whether it is earning money, earning income, in all these areas, they are separated from the main set of people. Second one is these people are impoverished. Impoverished, matlab, it means they have been made poor. The reason is they don't have any source of income. That's the reason. So coming back to again, the sentence is marginalized and impoverished forest dependent communities develop. So this is one of the loss of deforestation. Next is the re why is it so? The reason is these people depend for everything that is food, drinks, medicine, culture, spirituality, for everything, for their festivals, for their life, they depend on the forest. Now in many societies, as we know, females will go and collect the firewood from the forest. They will get water from somewhere. And if there is no forest itself, it is, it is cleared. They have to walk for long distances to get the same things. So the drudgery of women, the difficulties of women increases. Say, for example, they have to walk for 10 kilometers to collect some resources from the forest because a forest has gone far away from them. Earlier, they were very close to the forest. Now, when we females are walking for such a long distance, what will happen? It will cause serious health problems for women. And next one is the children are neglected at home. They are at home and these people have to go long distances to get. So that is there. If I see indirect impact of, then it can go for droughts. Other one is there can be floods. Why floods? If you cut down trees, the water will come down from the mountainous areas at a greater speed and will hit the poor the hardest. So all these are the losses. This is what is loss of cultural diversity. So here by now we have understood that we need to conserve our forest. Now for you, there is a long answer and the question is, why do we need to conserve our forest and wildlife? The reasons are, first one is there has been a rapid decline in wildlife population and forestry. So that is the first thing. Second one is it helps the ecological balance. Because if there is greenery, good amount of, there will be sufficient amount of oxygen and all the life can thrive. So it helps preserve the ecological balance and diversity of our life supports systems that is water air soil it protects all these things it helps to preserve genetic diversity of plants that's another one when i say genetic diversity of plants there will be one plant with different type of there will be different species supposing i just take cactus for example 
because it is very simple to understand. Cactus will have thousand varieties. So if one variety is not able to survive, at least the others one will be able to thrive. That is the benefit of genetic diversity. It helps to purify air, control floods, prevent soil erosion and maintain fertility. Forest releases pure air, which is important for human beings and keep a stable climatic condition for human health. These are all the benefits. That is why we need to conserve our forest and wildlife. This comes as a five mark question. Now, what has the government done? The government has passed certain acts at regular intervals to protect the wildlife. So first one is the year is 1972. So Indian Wildlife Act was implemented in 1972. This is for protecting habitats. Habitat is the natural dwelling place of wild animals and tribals. And an All India list of protected species was published. In this, the government has made a long list of protected species and published it, telling that touching these animals, killing these animals is illegal. Next is the Wildlife Act of 1980. Then it is 1986. In this, hundreds of butterflies. Other one is moth. Moth also looks like butterfly. But they are not butterfly. Butterflies can completely close their wings and open it. In the case of moth, it is not so. So they are slightly different. So butterflies, moth, beetles and dragonfly. These are added to the list of protected species. In 1991, for the first time, even plants were included. Say they were starting with some six species. So in this way, the forest and the wildlife was protected. Now we must understand when I say forest, forests are of different types and forests are classified. One is on the base of geography. On the base of geography, we say evergreen forest, deciduous forest, coastal forest, Himalayan forest like that. But on the political grounds by the government, the forests are classified as first one is reserve forest in simple words the word reserve forest means the forest is reserved for cutting trees so here what are reserve forests reserve forest is set aside by the government for the production of timber and other products so these are areas where at regular intervals trees are being cut but it does not mean people can go and cut the trees and bring it what happens here is only authorized individuals means supposing they have signed a contract with the government and the government has given them a contract they can go and cut the trees. So here, the government usually designates the boundaries of a reserve forest. So first thing is government will say, this is the area and this much area is coming under reserve forest. And then licenses are issued. And those who are getting the license, they can go and cut the trees. Or India, whatever forest we have, usme if half of the forest is counted as reserved forest. And this is reserved for cutting timber, in simple words. Now, which are the states where we have a lot of reserved forests? The states are first one, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, Uttarakhand, as well as Jammu and Kashmir. Now, in this, if I take Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, have maximum area. Madhya Pradesh has 75% of area under forest. Similarly, there is protected forest. Now, this Protected forest is protected and once again it will also have a boundary clearly and government will say this area is protected forest. Now, protected forests are meant for protecting the ecology. So here when I say protected forest, they are conserved and protected for ecological biodiversity and other values. So in these areas, cutting of trees is not allowed. This is mainly meant for nature protection. The primary objective of ecology it is ecological balance of the forest and associated ecosystem. Now in these, if I look at which are the states that are involved in protected forests, the states are, one is, as we have seen, it is Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh because maximum area in India, if you see, it is these two states. Then it is the other states. The other states are Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Rajasthan, Haryana, then it is Bihar and Odisha. These are other states which have lot of area as protected forest. Then there is a third type of forest and that is called unclassified. Unclassified means government has not planned anything yet. That can be given to sold to industries for industrialization. That can be given for settlements. Anything it can do. So such forests which has not been planned come in the category of unclassified forest. So what are these forests? 
these are other forest and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities. So in India, where are they? They are mostly found in the northeast. One is here it is uh, Gujarat and other one is northeastern states. So one is this part and other one is this region, northeastern hilly areas. Here you have the seven sisters. Now the seven are eight actually. So that is Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Meghalaya, Assam. These are all included in northeastern states. Now, in India, when, it, when I talk about conservation, so on the side of government, government has declared clearly this is reserve forest, this is protected forest and these are unclassified forest. Government has also passed certain acts. But apart from all these things, there are communities in India. And these communities have conserved and protected forest and wildlife. So in that, some of the examples are one of them is Sariska Tiger Reserves, Rajasthan. So Rajasthani villagers, they fought against mining that was going to happen in that area. And they showed the Wildlife Protection Act and said, based on this act, you cannot cut. You cannot go for mining in these areas. That is how they protected Sariska Tiger Reserves. Okay. Now, this Sariska Tiger Reserve is in Alwar district. Now, one more thing is the people that is inhabitants of five villages in Alwar district of Rajasthan. Now what they have done, they declared 1200 hectares of area as forest. They said that this area is, you know, a sacred place telling that this is Bhairo Devi, Dakhau sanctuary. So this is how they protected and they made their own set of rules and regulations. So here the community declared its own set of rules and regulations. And in this way, they are protecting the wildlife against outside encroachment. Yeah, outside encroachment means somebody, some uh, government MLA, jo hai, he will just take away that land. He will clear that in his name. He will take it in his name. That will be encroachment into forest areas. So that kind of things. Similarly, in Rajasthan, there is a community called Bishnoi. Now, they take care of these animals as if they are the family members. They love them a lot. They take care of them a lot. So Bishnoi village in Rajasthan, you can see herds of black buck. Other one is nilgai, peacocks. These can be seen as an integral part of community and nobody harms them. So this is how the tribals are taking care of wildlife. Similarly, many states in India have launched a program and that is called the Joint Forest Management Program. Now, what is all this? This is telling that this is meant for restoration of degraded forest. Supposing in a particular state, there are many patches of forest lands that have been degraded. So the people take the responsibility. People means a community, a community, a group has taken a responsibility telling that we will take care of this area and we will develop this area. So that is restoration of degraded forest. So in this, Odisha was the first state to launch this program. Similarly, all of you heard of Chipko movement, which was launched by females, women of Chamoli, that is in Uttarakhand. And in those days, that place was Uttaranchal and it was a part of Uttar Pradesh. So and in this way, they have saved 12,000 square kilometers of area that was under forest. Otherwise, pura ho jata. the entire area would have been cut down. How did they do this? When the people have come to cut the trees, the males actually in the villages were not there in that place. They went completely out because they were given a scheme. They were given some facilities. So they went to take that. So in the village, there were only females. The females ran out. They went to the trees and they hugged them. They surrounded it completely and they did not allow them to cut the trees. This movement popularly came to be known as Chipko movement. We will learn a little more about it after some time. Next to that is in our country, we also started a movement called Beej Bachao Andolan. Now in Beej Bachao Andolan, the farmers have demonstrated that we can produce crops with the help of organic methods. We don't need uh, HYV seeds. We need ordinary seeds. And that is called Beej Bachao Andolan. After some time, we'll be learning about them also in detail. So this is the way there are communities that have conserved and protected forest and wildlife in India. And this is a very important question asked as a five mark question. Now let's understand Chipko movement. So Chipko movement is a forest conservation movement. It was meant for conservation of forest. Now in 1973, what happened in the Himalayan region of Uttarakhand? which was earlier a part of Uttar Pradesh. Here, this movement started. Why it started? The reason is these, the villagers protested against cutting down of trees. So the people in these villages were against 
commercial logging that is commercial the cutting trees for commercial purpose so what they have done to protect it the will the, the females they ran out and they surrounded the trees they hugged the trees and that is how they protected the trees from cutting down now these moments was not just one moment there were many moments and it happened between 1972 and 79 more than 150 villages were involved and 12 major protests happened in these areas and there were many minor you know confrontations in uttarakhand finally in 1980 when an appeal was made to indira gandhi the then prime minister of india what happened is there was a ban for 15 years for cutting down of trees in this way they protected the forest similar bans were enacted in himachal pradesh and former uttaranchal that is earlier it was called uttaranchal now it is called uttarakhand it is a separate state now these are the females who were the first set of females who participated in chipko movement similarly there is beej bachao andolan now there are plenty of companies in india who are producing chemicals and they want these chemicals to be sold and to be utilized in the indian fields the people who are using chemical fertilizers they are spoiling the land and just because of some greed they want to produce more so that they, their profit ratio will increase they are using chemicals which can spoil the land similarly they are using hyb seeds okay once you take hyb seeds the same seeds will not grow again you need to go uh, to the organizations which are supplying or which are developing these hyb seeds so if i take india india has the largest number of small scale food growers in the world that is they have small small piece of land most of these farmers own less than 2 acres of land and if there is some climate change then they are not able to grow anything they are at a great loss so there were plenty of crop failures and farmers were in debts that is indebtedness okay and because of indebtedness naturally there will be a kind of a thought telling that why not i go for chemical fertilizers it will give me more profit but in tehri that is gharwal region of northern india farmers they practice sustainable agriculture using traditional rain fed farming practice what they practice is commonly known as bara anaja bara anaja is made up of two words bara and other one is anaja that is 12 different seeds are used so it is a practice of growing 12 or more native crops and uh, that is grown in a combination just as very co popular combination is you know first you when you grow cotton cotton takes away nitrogen from the soil so afterwards you should grow pulses pulses will add nitrogen to the soil in this way the fertility is maintained so that way it is it's a kind of a multiple cropping using 12 different seeds 12 different crops so these crops are not just food grains but they also have oil seeds pulses vegetables and spices so these seeds are used and they are local indigenous and they are you know climate friendly that is climate resilient and they are very useful in ensuring food security and nutrition so in this case only organic manure and fertilizers are used mixed farming is practiced crop rotation is done now all these things helps the farmer first thing is to keep the cost low and next one is have good you know harvest now this movement was started by vijay jardhari in the year 1980 and he is even now involved in the same activities and working in this direction so the concept of bara anaja shows how traditional knowledge and organic farming can bring sustainability for millions of small scale farmers working in climate sensitive communities across the one more that we have learned earlier was joint forest management this also involves local communities in 1988 in the state of odisha for the first time this resolution was passed what resolution joint forest management now it depends this 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 program completely depends on the villagers so wherever a community is formed what they do is they will take care of the degraded forest so degraded forest land in their state is taken care by these communities in return the members of these communities are entitled to other benefits means in that area where the where uh, the land has been degraded first thing is they plant trees so that it's a kind of a forestation next is in those areas they are allowed to practice even agriculture they can produce certain things 
they will get a share also in the timber which is sold the timber that is grown harvested sold so they get a share out so this is how and this is how the jfm worked similarly in our country there are many other communities that protected forest and wildlife so when i take india india comprises of many cultures so for us there are many things that are sacred clear and uh, when people go to any temple you will find plenty of monkeys there so they are langur there can be one of the variety that is mentioned in the textbook is langurs then there can be macaques they are regularly fed by the devotees when they go so they take care of them in our country there are around 14000 or more than that sacred groves when i say sacred we all know it is a place which is very sacred very pure groves refers to a small forest land a small patch of area which is a forest area so there are plenty of sacred groves in our country why because these are socially culturally medicinally religiously help important for the local people of that area so for them it is very very sacred they don't allow trees to be cut in that area so these are track of forest which are regenerated around places of worship so that will be a place of worship and around that area forest is developed so the forest protected or conserved in the name of god and considered to be sacred is what is called as sacred groves or it is called devaraya so sacred groves are forest conserved in the name of god and are considered to be sacred now these are preserved by society not by government so this is not a government activity this is done by local communities so in such areas hunting of animals cutting down trees all these things are not allowed now in india there are many tribals who are a part of this one of them is the mundas and the santhals of chhota napur these people worship mahua and uh, kadamba trees the tribals of odisha and bihar worship tamrin other one is mango tree in india we all know people as well as banyan these two trees are very sacred to all of us so these are all part of sacred groves so with this i conclude the chapter thank you